Rabbi Sachs spoke often about the unique individuality of every human being, but within the context of the importance of connections among all humanity. So we have here tonight a few very, very special individuals that we are lucky to be able to hear from. And the first person I'm thrilled to be able to ask to come speak a few words is Lady Elaine Sachs. Please come join us. I just want to wish you all a very good evening and to say how really very, very special it is for me to be here with you. Um, over the last two and a bit years, I, I can't tell you how much I have been really blown away by all sorts of people just like you. I don't think a week has gone by in all this time when someone hasn't come up to me and said, I read uh, about Parshat Hashavua from your husband every week, or my daughter has been learning from his, his learning in, in school. Every week somebody, very often who I really don't know, and, they, and they'd come up and say so. Only a, only a few days ago, last Friday night, when I was uh, having a supper with old friends in London, and he said that uh, here in Israel, his, his son and the family are, are living here, and the, and the eldest grandson is just about to go in the army here, and that he, the grandson of our old friend in London, is learning on, the, on I think it's called Mechina, what they learn before they go in the army from Rabbi Sachs. It's, it's coming from all directions, and it's coming from the most wonderful, wonderful people. So I really want to thank you all so much for all, all your support and all your, all your caring and all how you are teaching other people and learning with other people and with your families or with your children from school. Or I mean, I, I, when I came out here a, a few months ago, there's a school, a primary school in Yerushalayim, which is called the Jonathan Sachs School. And there are these young children and there are pictures of my husband on the wall and all this sort of thing I never would have expected, however much I knew that people revered him. So thank you all so much for all you're doing and I look forward to the next couple of days and hearing some more. Thank you. Thank you, Lady Sachs. We all thought of Rabbi Sachs as our Rav. Everyone in this room was able to read his works and respond to it personally. But the truth is that he was the official Rav of a particular community. And we have with us here tonight, we're very fortunate to have with us, the chairman of our British friends of Bar Ilan, who's sponsoring this dinner, Romy Tager. Casey, please join us. Uh, Professor Zavan, Lady Sachs, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor for the British Friends of Barilan University to sponsor this evening's dinner as our contribution to this amazing conference that has been organized to celebrate the ideas and influence of Rabbi Professor Lord Sachs. His three titles, Rabbi, Professor, and Lord, only begin to define Rabbi Sachs. I can think of no one else of whom it can be said that it was not simply a privilege for me to have known him, but a privilege to have lived in his time and experienced his learning, leadership, friendship, and his immense contribution and work as a public intellectual and teacher. As a rabbi, we in the UK and Commonwealth are entitled to regard him as our rabbi or chief rabbi. As a professor, we have to share Rabbi Sachs with the whole world. But again, as Lord Sachs of Aldgate, and a member of the House of Lords, which is part of the British Parliament, we were able to regard him as a unique spokesman and representative to the wider British community and to our government. We'll be spending the next two days hearing about and discussing the life and works of Rabbi Sachs as a philosopher, teacher, and public intellectual, those areas of his life are marked by his title, Professor. I'd like to say a few words about Rabbi Sachs as a rabbi and as a lord. I first came across Rabbi Sachs about 40 years ago. 
before he was even Rabbi Dr. Sachs. At the outset of his career as a rabbi, he applied for the vacant position of rabbi at my shul, Hampstead Garden Suburb Synagogue, which is popularly known as Norris Lee. I was not on the selection committee, but recall uh, my disappointment that he was not successful. Uh, some years later, when Rabbi Sachs was clearly well on the way to his incredibly successful career and preeminence that he would enjoy both in the UK and internationally, I was shown the minutes of the meeting of the selection committee that turned down his application. It recorded, Rabbi Sachs is a young philosopher who isn't going anywhere. <laughs> His work and achievements as Chief Rabbi will be covered by lectures to be delivered at this conference. What no one will be able to explain is how he was able to discharge the often difficult and time-consuming duties of Chief Rabbi while keeping up with his remarkable publishing and lecturing output. He did not neglect the communities that he led as Chief Rabbi, and amongst his many legacies, for example, are the, his new translations and accompanying notes of the Koran, Minag Anglia Siddha, and all five volumes of the Mahsa, which are used throughout the English-speaking world, indeed, even here in the English-speaking cities of, for example, Herzliya. <laughs> On a personal level, when I was sitting shiver for my father some 18 years ago, I was called to the phone and was told that it was the chief rabbi's office on the line. I took the call and after explaining why he was unable to visit the family, the sitting shiver, the chief rabbi spoke to me for about five minutes. I returned to the room where the rest of the family were and my wife Esther asked me a few minutes later what he had said. Uh, and I recall replying that I couldn't remember the detail of the conversation but the chief rabbi had left me feeling so proud to be my father's son and so uplifted. As a parliamentarian, chief rabbi Lord Sachs was very active in the fields of combating anti-Semitism, anti-Zionism and interfaith relations. His contributions uh, to House of Laws debates were often widely reported because of his moral authority and erudition. He was widely regarded as a broadcaster, especially his Friday morning thoughts for the day uh, on the BBC. He worked closely in his interfaith work with another member of the House of Lords, Archbishop Carey, who was the Archbishop of Canterbury, and thus the head of the Anglican Church. He discovered that he and Archbishop Carey had shared something in common. They were both keen supporters of Arsenal Football Club. Uh, they agreed to go to an Arsenal match together, although it was difficult to find a suitable date, especially with Rabbi Sachs not able to go on a Saturday and Archbishop Carey unable to go on a Sunday. <laughs> Eventually, they were able to arrange to go to a midweek game uh, with Arsenal playing at home to Manchester United. Unhappily for them, Arsenal were defeated by six goals to their three. On their way out, they were recognised by a journalist who approached them to discuss why they were at the match and asked them whether they had prayed for Arsenal. <laughs> and um, uh, the, jur the journalist said to him, presumably when you're praying for Arsenal, you expect them to win. Surely the result of this match demonstrates that there is no God. Uh, quick as a flash, the chief rabbi said, on the contrary, the 6-3 result proves undoubtedly that there is a God. It's just that he's a Manchester United fan. <laughs> In his all too brief retirement, Rabbi Sachs was able to increase his remarkable writings and lectures. He traveled widely and received many honors uh, including honours from this university, and served as a visiting professor at three others. But however, he was always prepared to give the benefit of his advice and wisdom to whomever asked him for help. Uh, in his speech earlier this evening, 
Professor Zavon uh, uh, told us about his visit uh, to uh, Rabbi Sachs shortly after uh, he was appointed as president of this university. Um, I don't know whether he'd forgotten, but I, I actually came with him. And before we uh, attend, before we went to Rabbi Sachs's house, he was round at my house and went through with me about 20 questions and points that he had written down in order to discuss. All that Rabbi Sachs was told was that uh, we were coming to talk about the um, Professor Zaban's idea for this university's third mission, and we were told that we had 30 minutes, um, which he was able to squeeze into what was a very busy day. Um, and as you heard, he delivered um, what uh, Professor Zaban described as a lecture, but what I remember as a monologue. It lasted an hour. He had no notes. He covered every one of Professor Zaban's points and about another 20. It was the most remarkable experience, um, and clearly one that has left as deep an impression on Professor Zaban uh, as uh, it, it, it has on me. On behalf of the British Friends, I can say that it's been a privilege to be associated with this conference and to witness how our rabbi and lord and the Jewish and wider world's professor is being remembered and honoured in the way that he would have so approved, namely to listen to and argue over his ideas and teachings, as well as to participate in regaling our many memories of Rabbi, Professor, Lord Sachs as an, an individual, as a husband to Elaine, and as a father, grandfather, and friend. Joanna Benarosh has spent much of her adult life devoted to helping Rabbi Sachs in his work. And we have just begun a relationship, so I can say the fortune was on both sides. I'm very much looking forward to continuing to work with you, Joanna, here as we build the institute together and build the cooperation between the Rabbi Sachs legacy and Barilan. Please. Thank you so much, Sharon. It's been a privilege to start working with you, and I'm looking forward to many more years working with you together. It's really special to see here so many familiar faces, good friends, old friends, and many new friends. Forgive me for not singling anyone out. We're all coming together to celebrate and learn from Rabbi Sachs, Zechet Tzadik Livrocha's Torah, his wisdom, his teaching. As I quote Rabbi Sachs when he spoke here in June 2018, and Professor Zaban has already mentioned it. Um, Barilan is a great university. It's very special to me because it combines what I call the right and the left hemispheres of the brain, Limude Chol and Limude Kodesh, and generates creativity from that encounter. Rabbi Sachs lived and espoused a life he called a Judaism engaged with the world, and that's what you see here at Barilan. As Rabbi Sachs told us, the citadels of liberty are houses of study. Its heroes are teachers, its passion is education, and the life of the mind, this too is what you see here at Barilan. Barilan awarded Rabbi Sachs an honorary doctorate in 2004, followed 10 years later with the Guardian of Zion Award in 2014. Barilan hosted the exciting conversation that Professor Jonathan Reinhold organized between Rabbi Sachs and Ramos Oz in 2001, and a debate that Rabbi Sachs had with Yuval Sherlow in 2013. And as we heard earlier, Rabbi Sachs was very proud to sit on the board here at, at Barilan. It's a university where Rabbi Sachs really felt at home, here in Israel. In his last book, Morality, Rabbi Sachs addressed what he saw were the most pressing challenges to our society today, cancel culture and safe spaces in universities in the Western world. Universities need to be a space for the pursuit of knowledge and therefore allow for open dialogue and multiple voices. Rabbi Sachs believed the ideal of the university must be a moral community, collectively engaged in the collaborative pursuit of truth. 
The university must be the guardian of open debate, courteous argument, civil speaking and respectful listening. It must provide the space for dissenting minds and for voices that challenge our comfortable assumptions. It must teach us to distinguish truth from falsehood, cogent argument from sophistry, the presentation of evidence from mere passion and persuasion. Barulan is clearly a model for universities around the world. It is truly wonderful to be at the beginning of this conference where you will have the opportunity to hear many voices discussing and learning from the incredible legacy that Rabbi Sachs has left us. It's our responsibility to ensure that legacy continues to have the impact it deserves and we are thrilled to be partnering with Barulan. What better place to continue the conversations that Rabbi Sachs began? Special thanks are due to President Ari Zaban, Professor Hanoch Ben Pazi, Professors Jonathan Reinhold and Dr. Miriam Feldman Kay, he ably helped with by Chava Tirosh Samuelson and Rafi Zaram, for your vision and your determination, and for, to all of you who have come together to make this dream a reality. We at the Rabbi Sachs Legacy look forward to working with you on the next step in our journey together. Thank you very much. A quick announcement. Those of you who ordered taxis, they will arrive at 10 o'clock, I've been told to tell you. With that, I'd just like to thank you once again for joining us and wish you all a bete avon. Enjoy the rest of the evening, the rest of the conference, and hopefully we will see you again at many of our events in the future.